If you are getting ready to move, then you understand the struggles. In today's video, I am starting off by cleaning the downstairs, doing some laundry, and then I'm gonna head upstairs and start packing up the closets and playroom. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Michelle and you have joined my channel in the midst of chaos. We are building a new house that won't be ready until mid-June, but in the meantime, we do have to move out of this house completely and into an Airbnb. After living in this house for almost nine years and bringing home three kids to it, we have acquired a lot of stuff and the moving process has been extremely stressful. But in the next three videos, I'm going to show you how I strategize the whole moving process, which believe me was quite stressful, but it's pretty hard to pack when you have a dirty home. So I'm going to start cleaning the downstairs first before I move upstairs and start packing. Before I get started, I wanted to share some really cool finds that I got from Temu and thank you to Temu for sponsoring today's video. Temu is an online marketplace that offers the most competitively priced products in multiple categories including my first item, which is this portable car vacuum cleaner. With having three young kids, my car gets messy so fast. So snagging one of these car vacuum cleaners has been so helpful. And y'all, new Timu users can get the handheld vacuum cleaner for only $1.34. Yes, you heard that right. You can get it by scanning the QR code on the screen. Not only that, y'all know I'm moving, but also I have a couple of summer trips coming up. So you can also snag this suitcase for just $38.49, which is an absolute steal compared to the average price. So don't miss out on these deals and go ahead and download the app right away. New Timo app users can get not only exclusive deals, but also check out the new arrivals, like all of this cute new clothing that I got for summertime. These pack of tops are super cute, stretchy, and affordable. All Temu users can search code DMR4544 or click on the link below in my description to get a $100 coupon bundle. New Temu users can search code DPY6424 or click the link in my description to get 30% off. I snagged a bunch of clothing, including these super cute shorts and this cute shirt that I'm going to kind of tuck in one sided to style. And I am so impressed with their clothing. This shirt is only $5.58 and I can dress it up with jeans and some cute wedges or dress it down more casual with the new shorts that I got and even wear it to the beach. I needed a cute and affordable weekend bag for a couple of weekend trips that I have coming up. And this bag comes in so many different colors and is only $8.87. It includes a pocket underneath where you can store toiletries and stuff and also has several different pockets that you can store stuff into. Almost every time I shop for myself, I also end up getting something for the kids as well. I saw the cutest little ladybug outfits and I had to grab one for each girl. Oh my gosh, it looks so cute right for summertime. So who doesn't love a quick handy gadget because I'm going to be moving, moving furniture around. I saw this handy furniture lifter. Who would have ever thought I can just easily lift it up, put on some rollers and move it aside. Even if I need to clean and move a coffee table around, it becomes useful in different ways. And lastly, I got this car organizer. For me, my car is the hardest thing to keep clean and organized. And the quality of this car organizer is heavy duty. It can store wipes, water cups, iPad. It even has a little stand where you can watch TV or color or draw. The quality of this for just $11.98 was a steal. So you can grab all the items that I mentioned by clicking the link in my description below and downloading the Temu app. best friend didn't care about the rules good on the weekends i'll be in fools drifting the deep space so brave and so stupid just like the movies how it's gonna stay in the fight with you just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it each and every high every night with you you and me so clueless
So based on feedback, I've had a lot of y'all comment that y'all are either also moving or y'all have some really good moving tips and advice. Someone had mentioned to check out a military family blog because military families do have to pick up and pack and go quite often than most. Also to just pack small things of what you need. That way you're not hauling everything around. Now what's interesting about our case is that we are not moving from one house to the next house. That would have been ideal and that would have been what we wanted except we sold our house sooner than when our new house is going to be ready. So in that case, the buyers did not let us fully lease back. They let us lease back and stay in the home for a little bit and then we had to move out into an Airbnb. So we're staying in an Airbnb close to our house because our kids are still in school and I need to be close to our kids' school. Someone had recommended maybe getting an RV and trying to stay at an RV close to um, someone we know, but we don't really have anyone that we know who has an Airbnb, Air, um, not an Airbnb, an RV, that has property around. Now I do, we do plan on going and staying with my mom and my stepdad, but they do not live close to us. So we have to be close to school. And then whenever school gets out, then we'll move in with my mom and stepdad for a couple of weeks. In between that time, we also have three trips planned. Two of them are just small weekend trips, like to the beach and stuff. And then we do have a week long trip um, to Mexico during that whole time frame as well. And all of these trips were already planned um, because it's like the start of summer before we knew that this was going to happen. So trying to pack for what we need for a month and what we don't need and can store away for a month in between all of these moves was really difficult. Not only that, the whole decluttering process was very challenging too, because when I go and declutter and, you know, post these videos, it's me kind of doing my stuff. And now that we have the whole family having to declutter, it's been challenging because Chris has been wanting to hold on to stuff. I want to get rid of it now. He wants to get rid of it like after we move into the new house. And it's just been a lot. And let me tell you that all of this stuff has stressed me out. Also, just to add another layer, the week before we moved out of this house, both Chris and Sailor got the flu. So they were home for three days and could not get up. And then right before that, um, Rye, my one-year-old, got the stomach bug for two days. And, we, and you know when your mom, you're just like, when your kids get sick and your family gets sick, you're just counting down the days. Like, when is it going to hit me? When is it going to hit me? And usually I always get sick when the rest of the family is sick. But somehow I managed to not get sick. And I don't know how that was possible. So I did do a lot of the house on my own. So we bought our house back in January. And after we sold our house, we had two weeks to move out. So we have known for a while that this was coming and I tried my hardest to do lots of decluttering and my whole goal with moving was that I was going to start upstairs and in closets first. The reason being is most of the time in closets you don't need to use the stuff so it doesn't matter if that's packed away for a while or not. So once I get the upstairs attics and closets and playroom completed, then I would work my way downstairs. 
Now, there are pros and cons to having a lot of time to pack up your stuff or knowing that your move is coming. And one of the pros is you have a long time. You have time to declutter. You have time to get organized. You have time to get rid of a lot of stuff before you have to actually move. And the bad thing is that you have a lot of time. And what ended up happening with us is that I felt like there were so many things that I couldn't do until last minute because we needed it until last minute that it drove me crazy. And and I wish it would have been a little bit faster and we could just like rip the bandaid off and not drag this process on, which is basically what it seems like. But here's a clean kitchen. It feels less cluttered because I have gotten stuff off the cabinets and off of the counters and it feels and looks cleaner. So I know in our new house, I'm going to try to keep it a little less crowded. So I had a question from one of my previous videos and they asked, how do you get motivated? Now I assume this question is getting motivated to do something that you don't want to do, opposed to like doing something that you probably should do, like brush your teeth every day or, you know, clean the house. If it's something that you probably should be doing, then I would say you need to develop some sort of routine. My definition of a routine is just a bunch of habits put together because once you do it enough in your routine, it becomes a habit like waking up in the morning and brushing your teeth. Now brushing my teeth isn't something I enjoy doing every day, but it's necessary so I do do it every day. This also goes for cleaning. I wouldn't say that I fall into a specific cleaning routine, but I do make it a habit to clean. Now, if it's finding motivation for something that you don't necessarily want to do, then there's a couple tips I can give you because trust me, I didn't necessarily want to pack up this whole house. I had no idea how I was going to do it and I was not super motivated to do it either. But the first thing I did was set some sort of goals in order to have a clear vision of what I want and need to accomplish. For example, if your goal is to lose weight, then you have to have a clear action plan of how you're going to accomplish it. For me, my goal was to pack up this entire house. And the first thing I did was have a clear vision, meaning I was going to start in all of the attics and all of the closets and pretty much work from top to bottom. So for example, the first thing and what I'm doing here is I'm going through all of the kids' clothes and either putting away all of the winter clothes that I'm not going to need to pack here eventually and also getting rid of all of the clothes that don't fit. The next thing to do to help you get motivated is to pair the activity with something that you enjoy doing. 
You may already do this and not notice it. For example, whenever you are going to the gym, you put in your AirPods or your headset and you listen to music. Or when you're cleaning the house, you put on my YouTube videos. Just kidding. You put on YouTube, you put on music, you do whatever you need to do so that you can just get going. Same goes for whatever activity it is that you are trying to do. So for me, a lot of times when I listen to music, I'll go back and forth, but then you get like you put it on some playlist and then you don't like the next song that's playing and then you're, you get distracted so much, or at least that happens to me, that I'm constantly being like, Alexa, change the station. Oh no, I like the song. I don't like the song. That I just put it on either a podcast or an audiobook that's like 45 minutes long and there's I'm not stopping to skip. I'm just going through it and listening to it the whole time. So it's kind of like my time, or if you enjoy reading books and you listen to an audiobook, you can put on an audiobook and not be distracted by what it is you're trying to do. The next thing I would recommend doing, and at least that I did, was I did reward myself for the small efforts. So after each weekend of getting a bunch of stuff packed, even though it felt like it was never ending, and the more boxes that we brought out, because if you start like in the closets, you look around the house and you're like, it feels like I didn't accomplish anything. But in reality, you did. We would go out to dinner and celebrate. We would get a babysitter, go grab a margarita, and just kind of reward, reward ourselves for what we had done. And another thing this could kind of fall under having a clear vision is to break it out into smaller pieces. So if it seems so overwhelming, which trust me, this whole house, the whole thing was overwhelming, is to break it up into smaller pieces. So like I said, I sectioned out one area at a time. I started in each closet, started from top and worked my way down to the bottom of the house, the downstairs. And then take breaks as you go. I'm not the type of person to go, 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 go for like eight hours straight. I will give you like a good four hours, if that, and then I'm like, I'm, I'm done for the day. I, I cannot focus on this. Um, this is too much. It's time for me to take a break. And lastly, everyone has a time of day where you are most productive. I would say try to schedule in the activity in the time of day where you feel most productive. For example, for me, that is right in the morning. If you ask me to do something after eight o'clock at night, I am pretty much brain fried and I cannot do anything. Some people thrive at night and that's when they feel most productive. So figure out when the most productive time of day for you is and try to fit it in that time. Now, the top three things of why you may feel unmotivated is number one, fear. Fear of failure, fear of just not knowing how to do it, fear of it not working out the way that you wanted it to, maybe fear of what people will think. And I will say for me personally, the only way to get over my fear of something is to actually take action to get started. Another thing that causes some to feel unmotivated is that you're setting the wrong goals. You may be setting goals that you feel are too easy, so you're not getting that sense of accomplishment, or you're setting goals that are too hard for the stage that you're in your life right now or the season you're in right now, and then it causes you to feel discouraged. And by the way, I did create a goal getter guide. It helps you map out your goals. It helps you overcome your fears, set sustainable, realistic goals. I have that guide down below. It's completely free. to download. All you got to do is put in your email address and then you'll get the guide emailed over to you for free. So if you're interested in that then and you need some more clarity on your goals, then I do recommend it because I created it. And the last thing that keeps you unmotivated is that you have a lack of clarity. You don't know how to accomplish the goals. You don't know what to do next. You're not laser focused and completely sure what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish. This is why setting goals is so important. And this is why I'm a huge fan of priority lists over to-do lists. If you've ever heard me say that before, a priority list are the things that you have to do in the day that will drive you closer to the goal you want to accomplish. 
So hopefully that was helpful to get you motivated. I know that summer is right around the corner and most of the time people set goals at the beginning of the year, not in the middle of the year, but trust me, it's never the right or wrong time to start creating new goals. So it's definitely not a secret that we have a lot of clothes and I like buying clothes and I like buying kids clothes. So I my goal here was to get rid of everything that is too small for Rye and Savannah and then usually all of Sailor's clothes get passed down to Savannah. So I hang on to those and that is my donation pile for right now, putting all of everything in bags and then I have friends that I give the clothes to. If you don't have the drawer storage organizers for clothes, it has been game changer. I originally got them, I saw it on a YouTube video when I first started YouTube in 2020, and I won't go back because the way that we end up packing everything to take from location to location, wherever we're moving that week, until we finally move into our house, um, I just pick up those, those drawer organizers and then place them in the bin. You'll see it in the next couple of videos. And if you're not subscribed, then subscribe so that you can see how it all plays out. But next I'm just going to pack up. I have a little donation box there for all the books that I'm going to donate. And then I will pack the rest up in a box. And all of those will be stored for the next month because we did get two different, two large storage storage units one is indoor for all of my um, nicer furniture and then one is outdoor for everything else i want to be daring baby dance the night away i let my head down if i want don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time doesn't sound like fun you can do better, let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better, so much better I want let yourself be free and maybe you will find that there is more to like than being pretty honey let's just face it you can do better let me show you what a good time looks like you can do better so much better
So this room that I'm in now is Rye's room and it used to be Savannah's. So we took Savannah home from the hospital and it was a girl room and then whenever we had Rye it became a boy room and we wallpapered the back wall and it was kind of bittersweet and since we had just done that like within the last two years or less than two years, probably a year and a half ago, wait, how old is Rye? He'll be two in August. So around that time. Um, it was kind of bittersweet because we had just put it together and I just loved the way the room looked. Now in Rye's new room, I'm going to use all of the same stuff, except I don't know if I'm going to wallpaper or if I'm going to do like shiplap or board and batten on the walls. I'm not sure yet. So Chris does a lot of that and he's like, I have all of these ideas and he's like, Michelle, I don't have time to do any of this. And I'm like, okay, because I'm like, when we get in, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And all my ideas are just spinning. And he's like, no, too overwhelming. But eventually we are. I just don't know 100% how I'm going to do everything. I think I'm in the stage now where I am like, okay, let's get in the house and then I'll figure it all out. But the girls are each getting their own separate room and Sailor is super excited and Savannah is not. She likes sharing a room with her sister. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to decorate their rooms as well. So any advice or anything that y'all have seen cute that I would like, send it my way and let me know. But thank you all so much for watching today. This is where I'm ending today's video. It's not perfect, but there is a lot of progress that was made. And I will see you guys next week for a continuation.